So we're going to balance the equation Cu plus HNO3 gives us a CuNO3 2 plus NO plus H2O. Sometimes you'll see equation NO2. That's a different equation. It's actually a lot easier to balance. So we're doing this with this NO here. My recommendation for this equation is using something like an algebraic method or the redox methodology. Trial and error will work, but it's really kind of hard. This was difficult for me. It took me a while. So I probably would have used redox just to go through those steps that I know are always going to work out and give me the answer. There are links in the description to both the redox method and algebraic method. But let's see what we can do here. I'll show you how I ended up doing this. So I've counted the atoms up on each side. Sometimes if you have a polyatomic on both sides, you'll have that listed as one thing. But here we have nitrogens and oxygens all over the place, so that just isn't going to work. It probably makes sense, since we have hydrogen here and here, to start there. Because nitrogen, I have a nitrogen, 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 and then oxygen, I have oxygens all over the place here. So I'm going to start out with the hydrogen, see how that works. So I have two hydrogens here and then just one over here. If I put a two here, two hydrogens, two times one, two nitrogens, two times three, six oxygens. All right, that looks pretty good. I have this odd number I'd like to deal with here. So I think I'm just gonna double this. So we're gonna make that four. Because now I can put a two here, two times two is four, and I've added an oxygen, so this becomes nine. And then for the nitrogen, I have two times one, that's two plus one, so I still have three. And here's the problem. You could spend quite a bit of time trying to figure this out, and this just doesn't work. This is kind of a dead end for us. It's a good start, but you find out it just doesn't work. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here. And I'm just going to take a guess. I'm going to move this, change it to be 4. Because based on what I did earlier, it felt like that might work. So now I have 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 4 times 1. So I have 11 oxygens. So 8 hydrogens. Let's put an 8 over here. 1 times 8. And then nitrogens. If I'm going to have an even number on here, I'm going to have to put a 2 in front of this. So there's 2, and then I would need 6 more. So I have 1 times 2, that's 2. So if we put a 3 here, that's 3 times the 2 nitrogens. 6 nitrogens plus 2 nitrogens, that's going to give us a total of 8 nitrogens. So those are balanced. And let's add the oxygens up. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18 plus... 2 times 1, 2, plus 4 times 1, 4. That's 20, 24, and this is balanced. And then I almost forgot, we have 1 times 3 there. We have the 3 coppers, so put a 3 here, 1 times 3. That'll fix those copper atoms. So that's the way I ended up doing this. This is not an easy problem to do by trial and error. Take a look at the description. I have a link to this as a redox reaction, balancing it as a redox reaction, or the algebraic method. This is Dr. B balancing the equation Cu plus HNO3 yields CuNO3 2 plus NO plus H2O. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.